to the 41st episode of A Little Thespian Podcast. On today's episode, we talk to the class of 2022's John Abbott College graduating year. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a great time. We have a bundle of guests and we are back and it is going to be a great year with great new content, great new equipment. You guys are going to love it and I cannot wait to join you on this journey. So without further ado, let's hop in to episode 41 of the Little Thespian Podcast. Before we continue, this is just me editing Matthew, talking to you guys, asking if you like this intro more than you like the originals, let us know down in the comment section below. And guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, thank you for the amazing guests and the amazing new equipment. This was, this was the first one taped back, so I really hope you guys enjoy the new setup. And there's much, much more amazing things coming. So, let's not wait any longer. Let's hop in to episode 41 of the Little Thespian Podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to the 41st episode of the Little Thespian Podcast. On today's episode, we have the class of 2022 at John Abbott College. And we have a bundle of amazing guests. So without further ado, let's go around and uh, introduce everybody. So first we have, in no particular order, Tyler. How are you? You doing well? I'm not so bad. Yourself, Matt? I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. I have an um, amazing guest today. So it's a great time and we're back. So it's always fun. We have Eric. How are you? Whoa, I'm doing good. Yourself, Matthew? I'm good. I'm good. Yes, Daisy. Sir. Hello, Matthew. Hello. I'm, I'm good. A um, bit stressed with my computer issues. But other than that, I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing well. And computer issues, I get it. I completely understand. Zoom is, well, it's Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have Travis. How are you? Hi, I'm doing pretty good. Happy to be here. Uh, happy to see some friendly faces and talk about what we love. Good. Yeah, it's always great. Huh? And we have Philip. Hello. It's very nice to be here. I am so pleased to have you all here, and we're going to have a great time. As we're back, the Little Thespian podcast has been a very long hiatus. I know, partially my own doing, but we are back. Um, and guys, uh, it's going to be a blast today. We're going to talk about what we love, theater. Um, and we're going to talk about John Abbott College and beyond John Abbott. Um, but the first question, as per always on the podcast... Um, and we can go around and just discuss this. Um, how did you all get into theater? Oh, well, <laughs> that's a that's a long time coming. I, I think if we're starting off, um, it's been so long. 
I started off in media arts at Abbott and then I failed out in the second year because I was just a terrible student. And then I remembered that my high school's teacher, one in like sec three, had called my dad like in the middle of the day. And you know when you get that call from your teacher in the middle of school, you're like, oh no. And your dad calls you like, Tyler. And you're like, yes, did I miss up? No, your teacher said you're really good at theater. You should do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then from there, the rest is history. Joining ALC, joining Prof, and we're still here. Wow. No, I mean, it really, it comes at random times, huh? Like, it, it can really be either you guys grow up and do it, or it can be like, okay, just the first experience in the arts, you know? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, how, how did you all else get into it? Uh, on my end, uh, if anybody else wants to go. Go ahead. Uh, well, first, thank you for having us, Matthew, for real. Uh, really, really excited. Uh, and basically the reason why I got in was, um, well, you know, when, when you're younger, I mean, I was, I was fresh out of high school and then I went into Abbott, um, and not really knowing what to do. I went through, I think three schools, uh, growing up. So sometimes when I switched schools, it, it was due to like, I didn't really find my place. And back in high school, um, I, I wanted to be bold. I went into high school in sec three, you know, in the middle of, a year where two people, where people already knew, knew each other for two years. And I said, you know, I want to be, I want to be me, you know? And I remember um, telling myself, I just want to be authentic and I want to take something that I want to take without being influenced by other people around me. And um, both theaters stood out, you know? So I tried it out. And ever since, you know, the first class, it was, it was, it was in the beginning, you don't, it's like uncharted waters. So you're like, Oh, we're doing all this, all this stuff. Oh, we're doing all this like very movement stuff. Oh, we're really putting ourselves out there. Um, but that like that joy of fully being whatever you could be is something that I that just made me say no nah, this is it and then after my three years of uh, that program in high school after I moved I went to Abbott and then well you know here we are so and overall it's been a pretty good ride you know yeah great and honestly guys it's a pleasure to have you guys on um, the amount of uh, guests that I have on, um, you know, it's just, it's great that we have a discussion of what we love. Um, and the more people I can get on here, the better. So thank you all for being on first off. And, um, like I said, we're, we're just, we're going to have a blast today. Um, we're going to talk about things yet to come, things that you guys have done. Um, and just what you guys are looking forward to, because a lot of people need to look forward to stuff now that, stuff is coming back. We've been dealing with stuff for over two years and I feel like we all need that, that sense of normality. So hopefully fingers crossed that that normality is right around the corner. Well said. Man. Um, so uh, yeah, Daisy, Travis, Philip, how, how did you guys get in? Uh, well, if, go ahead. Yeah, I'll go ahead. <laughs> uh, Tyler and I have a very similar story. Uh, I originally joined uh, John Abbott in uh, sciences, trying to study for mathematics. Uh, and eventually my love of those fields left me. <laughs> so I failed out pretty hard and went to night school for several years. And when it came time to choosing my new program, I thought back to high school at my last show of my high school production of The Jungle Book. Uh, literally right after the bows, the cast members were all sitting around in a circle, you know, laughing, screaming, having, congratulating each other. It was a great time. And one of my castmates gripped me by the shoulders and says, you have to keep doing this. And I just thought of that when I was signing up. I'm like, what's the harm in trying? And that's what got me into the program. And that's what got me to doing what I love. Well, and, and it, it really is. It can either be like, I know I was saying before that it can be like that one experience, but it's all, it can also be that one person that just kind of gives you a chance and gives you that outlook. You know what I mean? Um, and it's true. It, it, I've, I've been saying on the podcast since we started, it's career of passion. Um, and I mean, if you had that passion long ago, usually it stays behind if it, you care about it that much. So I'm, I'm glad to see it. Um, can I go? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I got forced into it as well, pushed by someone uh, in my school. 
Um, I was actually auditioning for a musical because I really liked to sing back then. And uh, it didn't work out. I went home, I cried to my mom. My mom called the school <laughs> and the, um, uh, the, the directrice, how do you say that? The principal? The principal, yeah. Oh, she came yeah. up to me. Let's go, Charis. <laughs> <laughs> the principal, she came up to me and she was like, hey, there's this theater group at school you should join. And I went, I didn't like it at first, but I stayed and here I am now. Here we go. You just got to take that leap of faith sometimes, right? And exactly. There you go. You landed on your feet and here you are at Abbott. And Daisy. Yeah, I, uh, I originally got interested with acting when I was nine years old. Um, and I was watching all these characters on screen, like dying. And then after we watched the movie, we'd always watch interviews of the actors. I love this story so much. I tell it every time. <laughs> and... Um, so I would see the actors on screen and I'd go, mommy, how did they die? But they're alive again. <laughs> and she's like, acting, duh. <laughs> so um, I went, wow, I, I, I wanna do that. And then when I studied acting more and more, I realized the, the gifts it gives you, right? And um, how, how, <laughs> euphoric I guess it could be sometimes and I, I just kept kept going and here I am <laughs> it, it really can be euphoric I mean I feel like we all have had this feeling now where we get on stage there's just something else that happens um and it's true I mean that's a hilarious story that you saw people die and you're like I want to do that you know <laughs> um but um, that's the thing. I mean, it, it really is. There's something that happens when you get on stage and those lights come down and you're just telling a story. I mean, I feel like a lot of people can attest to this, that when you're telling a story that's not like you at all, you feel more in your element than anywhere else, right? Because you're kind of away from reality for however long the show is, right? Um, but you can see people laughing, you see people crying sometimes. And that's why I do theater. And I know that's why a lot of people do theater. There's a cathartic experience, not just for the people watching, but for the people doing it too, right? We love it because we feed off of that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, amazing stories, guys. Um, and I'm so glad you guys all ended up where you were meant to be. Um, and, you know, it's... It's great that now you guys are very close to ending your time at John Abbott College in the professional theater program. I know it's bittersweet um, and you guys are going to feel it more next semester, believe me. Um, but I mean, it all has to come to an end eventually, guys. But yeah. I want to get into a question I always ask on this as well. Do you guys have any words of wisdom uh, for people that may want to jump into theater now? Uh, because, I mean, a lot of people, you know, have been dealing with COVID and whatnot. And I know with bills and whatnot, it's not very lucrative acting, but they might find that love now. And jumping back into the arts um, might be what they want to do. So do you guys have any words of wisdom for someone that may want to jump into the arts? I mean, honestly, like, it's a real kind of moment of just go for it. Honestly, theater is such a form of creative expression that you really can't get, like, anywhere else. Like, like you were saying before, Matt, like, when you get on stage, there's just this, like, sense of euphoria where you're just, like, not yourself at all. And it's an experience you can't get elsewhere. And even if it's just, like, for one time or something, I think everyone at least, like, once should have an experience with theater because it's it changes a lot of things in you you know like you <laughs> i can personally attest to this you know it, you just, it's a confidence booster you you know you let go of your insecurities you know you just go out there and do it it's a chance for you to like let all of these thoughts you've had in your mind just like go out and just be free 
it's really like a freeing experience. So I know like the times now are, you know, kind of awful and it's, it's a bit scary to do, but you know, any way you can honestly find to express yourself nowadays, just to get that sense of relief. So you're not staring at the same four walls every single day. You know, it's, it's a good thing, man. Honestly, it's, it's really like, I want to say therapeutic, honestly. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing too. I mean, a lot of people that are very shy or a lot of people that, you know, was that one awkward kid in school tend to be the person that joins theater, right? Bingo, bingo. I was, I was super shy. <laughs> I was super shy. And then I, I keep saying the story and we were talking about Faustus before, but then I, several years later, um, being beat up on stage with no shirt on, just having the time of my life. Um, you know what I mean? And Matthew, when he was 12, 13, would be like, the hell are you doing? You, you don't do that, right? You're that kid in the corner that you're just like barely talking to anybody. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the thing, guys. Usually what I say on here is just take the leap, right? Um, shine bright. That's, that's my thing that I say at the end of every episode. Why? Because life's too short, guys. Do what you love. And it, even if acting isn't what you love right now, do it once. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See what happens. You, you got time. I know life's short, but you might as well attempt the things that you might want to try out one day. All right? Bucket list. Um, but yeah. Anyone else have any words of wisdom? Yeah, um, I, I would say to, now, uh, everyone struggles with this, not just actors or artists, I think this is everyone in general, is do it for yourself, and don't do it just to get, like, the applause and other people's approval mm-hmm. and whatnot. That does feel great, and it does give you uh, motivation to continue, but really trying to focus on the things that you can improve for yourself, the things that you want to do for you. Um, and I, I think that in the long term is, is better. And it is very hard to do. It's, I think a lot of us in this class are still struggling to do that as well. Um, and mm-hmm. try not to take other people's uh, like criticisms too harshly on ourselves. Um, but that, that is, I would say one of the biggest pieces of advice I could give to people. It, it really is like, you really have to do kind of like, um, a self-evaluation. I would say it might be the best way to explain it. Um, you know, it's at the beginning, a lot of first years, if there's first years watching this, um, which I hope there are, um, it may seem like everyone's against you at the beginning. I promise you, nobody is. Um, same thing with every audition you go to. It might seem like everyone's against you. Nobody is. Everyone wants to see people succeed um, as in theater. We all are a community. We all uh, love the work that we see, regardless if it's a weird, awkward dance piece that some people like and some people dislike. Mm-hmm. Or if it's something that's very out there, I love you, Andy, but like something like Decalogue. Um, Amen, Decalogue. Um, <laughs> I, I loved it. I was a part of it. But I know a lot of people did not know what the hell was going on. Um, but that's the thing, right? You, you kind of, everything that you do, every story you tell is going to tell you a bit more about yourself. And it's going to challenge you and it's going to, you know, allow you to explore things that you never realized you needed in your life, but you might, right? Um, I didn't know anything about the Old Testament or the Ten Commandments. Now I do, right? So something like that, you know, it's, don't be hard on yourself, guys. Just take it with a grain of salt. Prove it at the end, right? If people are Mm -hmm. against you, that's what you do you shine bright. Um, so, um, yeah, I think it's a great little segue, um, to, you know, talk about your experience at Abbott. How are you guys in first year compared to now? 
What would you tell oh. me? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's oh my god. What would um, you tell people, your first people. year self if you had any any thing that you wanted to tell them? What would you tell them? What I would say would be don't waste your time. Like, don't say like I used to see coming into CJEP, I was like, okay, this is school. So in this program, I must complete assignments. But getting up in the years, I realized like, instead of becoming it just as like school, it really became more of like a, okay, I'm excited to see what I'm going to do. But that only happened because I said, I'm only going to be here for a short amount of time. And either I'm going to make it count or I'm going to end up saying, man, I really let that train go by. And that happened to me when um, probably around, around, around mid second year where in, in first year I was like, I was still, I, I, I was still a kid, you know, and not really knowing what, 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 what this was, you know, enjoying living away from home. But then it became so much more than just my, like, like about, about, about li- like, The people that I've met in the class, uh, living for the people that te- that that taught me, you know, like uh, going going back on Andy, you know, in the in, in the beginning, going going on stack, going on so many amazing teachers that in the beginning I was like, okay, this is a teacher, but now that I've started working more, and not just working, playing and enjoying what I'm doing, I see them as comrades, and you know, talking to Zach about, you know, oh Zach, I think I should do this this way, or talking about to, to anybody about, hey, should I do it this way, and even some of some of my classmates, you know, like. Tyler helped me do lines, you know, so many times. And, you know, it, it, it create it creates, it creates bonds that like, like you said, sometimes you never really knew. And I want to say, uh, I really liked what you said, Daisy, about being afraid of like sometimes what people think. And it really taught me to just say, everybody cares, but everybody also doesn't care at the same time. And life is too short to live it for other people. Like we, like we said, so live it for the people that want to, like you said, Matthew, may make you shine, you know, and it can be anybody around you. And sometimes it just takes a bit of time to get to know more. And that's what, that's what the years really taught me. So, yeah. Very well put. Anyone else? Yeah, I have some easy advice that I give, I would give to myself, but it's also what I say to any of the first years that intercept me in the hallways, like, what do I do? What do I do? Help me. What's your piece of advice, right? Don't be afraid to try things, right? Um, I feel like we get so hung up about like trying something new, like the daunting idea of not being comfortable with something or sticking within our comfort zone. But there's so much good that comes out of just, let's do it a little differently this time. Let's, you know, step a little differently. Let's talk a little differently. And I'm not sure who said it first, but many of our faculty members have said it, that when you're in theater, you are in a play. You are doing play. You are here to play. So have fun. Just play a bit more. The work will always be hard. And when we graduate and it's our full-time jobs, it'll still be work. It'll be a nine to five. We get it. But you're working to have fun. So don't forget that. I think too many first year actors forget that the point is to enjoy this work. Yeah. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I've said it on here before because I believe that Mm -hmm. might have been Andy um, that said that. But (laughs) it it does sound like Andy. Um, He's definitely said it before. Exactly. And I mean, like, that's the thing. We we do plays, right? That's all we do is just have fun. And the part of the thing that I love about, you know, we we're gonna talk about Abbott a lot during this time, but I was saying before we started that there's a sense of family right and no one wants to see you uh, fall on your on your face guys no one wants that right and if they do then they're not helping the ensemble they're making it worse mm-hmm. right um there's always going to be someone to pick you up when you fall all of, all the time whether it's faculty whether it's uh you know the p- people in your scene or just a second year or first year you know what i mean there is always going to be someone there to be like, that was good. Don't be hard on yourself. There's always going to be somebody there. Um, and, you know, it's, it's very good advice um, that 
a lot of people need to hear, you know, especially first years. Because I know a lot of first years come in, me being one of them, um, and thinking, well, I don't belong here. This guy has done 15 plays before, you know, she's been in a musical. I've done improv. You know what I mean? I've like <laughs> done nothing. Um, but that's the thing. You can't compare yourself either, guys. You know what I mean? There's there's something about, you know, not being on the same playing field. But then the first thing that they say when you come in, everyone starts at day one. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Right. Um, and a lot of people just need to hear that, you know, that someone is going to be there for you <laughs> no matter what. That's what the ensemble is there for. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, very good advice. Anyone else have more advice for first years? Um, my piece of advice is something I'm still working on and it goes off with what you guys have been saying um, is just to get out of your comfort zone and as well just to play you know just don't be stuck in this the same mindset for everything that you do and to try different things like like Travis has been saying and, um, I, th- I think it's important and it's something I'm still working on uh, and it's something I'm, I want to push myself to keep working on um, but I wish I knew that earlier. <laughs> I wish I, I started working on that earlier. And that's the thing they say when you leave too, that you want to do another three years. Believe me, I can attest to that. You do want to do another three years when you leave. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yes, it's a long time, but it's so worth it. Cause at the end you're like, well, now I kind of know. Cause I left, did stuff. And now what they were saying probably should have put into effect. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Um, but I actually want to talk about your guys' most recent um, accomplishment, which was love and information. So whoever missed it, can you give a brief synopsis and how you guys felt during the production of love and information? Ooh, well, to say that it was an Andy play is an understatement. Let's go tell it. Again, those who probably listen to this podcast know very well what an Andy play entails. Yes. But um, I <laughs> or think maybe the, they're still trying to figure it out or Honestly. they're still, still trying maybe. to figure it out. But then again, that is the point. Um, but I think ugh, the one way that I found that it was best described to was Andy described it or I, I can't remember. I think it was like a description from Andy one time or was in class where it's one of those things where it's like, you know, when you like look on the Internet, open up an article click on a hyperlink, don't finish reading that article, start the next article, don't finish reading that article, click on the next hyperlink to go to the next article. So all in all, it's just a kaleidoscopic barrage of just scene, 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 scene. None of them are connected, except for like one kind of overarching theme throughout of misinformation, lack of information, love. You ring the bell for that one, but... Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, it, it it's honestly just a series of scenes between two characters all about love in different forms. Mm-hmm. Good and bad. Good, bad, mm-hmm. non-existent. Mm-hmm. That's how I would describe it. Yeah. And, how would, describe and how would you guys experience on it? Like, did you guys like the the whole you guys are now on stage i would imagine mm-hmm. after a long oh, hiatus oh yeah. you guys are probably yeah. very what happy. a great feeling man having finished alc then taking that long of a break and never being able to get back on stage and finally stepping back on that stage i don't think there will ever be a more like cathartic feeling than hearing once again every night welcome to the cast oh, great theater, theater. Oh, every God. night it's, <laughs> it, it's it makes your soul feel happy. It does. Yeah. It was really fun to see everything in, in, in motion, like, and even, even, even having, having a whole, a whole tech crew behind you, like knowing that you're, it's so much more than just the actors, you know, seeing all these crazy people come out with one thing I loved was, you know, the costumes. And, and in the beginning I was like, Oh, you know, I'm going to have time to switch and everything, but and I ended up being, being super fine. And um, to really, to really see it all come to life. Starting from Andy being like, all right, guys, so this is maybe what we're going to do to I, this is our last show and Andy telling us, I'm proud of you, you know, and it was, it was, it was, it was, it was really cool to see 
to get closer to Andy, to get closer to my class. I got much closer to a lot of people in my class. Um, and it was, it was amazing. Loved it. Yeah. That on that note, Eric, I think one of my like favorite things that I got out of finally doing a production on stage is actually getting to work with the des designers and technicians yeah. because of quarantine, we had even more of a disconnect between the two streams and mm -hmm. not even seeing these people's faces, let alone knowing their names for two years. Mm -hmm. It was really important to me that when we started production, like yeah. I'm going to get to know these people because I trust them and I love the work that they do. And they, I hope they love the work that we do. <laughs> um, but I wanted to make sure that our community was a bit more tight knit. And I'm so grateful yeah. that I was able to meet and befriend so many more uh, wonderful people in the community. Yep. That we might work with in the future, you know? So, Hopefully. exactly. Hopefully. Here's Hopefully. Fingers crossed, yeah. That's the I thing, guess. like, honestly, guys, the fact that um, a lot of people, I don't talk too much about the tech side and whatnot, but we need more techs on here. We need more designers on here. So if you guys want to come on, let me know. Um, but <laughs> honestly, like without them, guys, no production happens. Nothing happens. We're not lit. We can't be seen. We're not wearing anything. That's illegal. Um, we also can't, um, you know, we, nothing happens without them, right? So we really have to, you know, thank them. So like, thank you, all techs, all designers. Um, I know it's been rough for you guys recently too. Because... Um, your visions are not put out right because you can't be seen um but honestly uh we got to get you guys uh away from backstage and onto the podcast when we can but honestly yeah. you, you guys yeah. are right. it's out of the shadows out of the Jesus shadows too. um but yeah um anyone else have any more um tidbits about love and information I was going to say, um, I'm really, really glad that our first show was an ensemble piece uh, because it got us to get closer to each other and um, mm -hmm. we got to feed our ideas off of each other. Mm -hmm. And I think it was just really what we needed as a group. And I have a feeling that our next and last show is going to be extremely different from that. And I'm glad that we had this experience as the first show. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad also that we were able to have an audience, like a full audience. Um, originally, it was just going to be like, what was it, 10, 15 people? Mm -hmm. um, because the, the uh, wow, English, <laughs> uh, the theater was going under construction. Um, and a lot of people, unfortunately, the year before us who graduated last year, um, none of them got really any sort of stage experience with an audience. And I'm just glad that this semester or last semester we were able to. So that I was happy about. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was gonna, I'm actually, that's a perfect segue. There's always perfect segues on the show. I love it. Um, but there's, you always look out for them. I, yeah, exactly. I'm like, yeah, no, need that. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Uh, now you guys are going to have a whole new uh, stage. And what do you guys think about that? Because you guys were the last ones to, to be on the Casgrain stage till fall of 2022, um, which is insane like that. to me. <laughs> um, but how, how do you guys, yeah, how, what do you guys think about that? The whole new construction of the Casgrain Theater? It's a trip, man. You don't like it, like Daisy just said. You really don't think about it until it's done, and then after it's like, wow, we really are the last people to perform. And like being there for so long, seeing all these productions on this stage, it's just like it's gonna feel like a completely different like world because we're gonna be gone by the time it's finished. So when we get back, we're gonna be seeing other people perform on it. So it's just gonna be like this real alien feeling, like whoa, that's not us on that stage. That's not our stage. Well, mm -hmm. it, it's it's gonna probably look nice and i'm like you know i don't doubt the construction is gonna look like a better stage than we had before you know better sound quality a house that doesn't eat up all the sound from the stage you know thank god but it's just gonna feel really strange that's what it is it's like the library you know when you've been around abbott so long you remember what the old library looked like and now you're seeing the new library and you're like Man, this is just yep. not the same thing. Those gray carpeted basements. Oh, 
Not a better place to sleep in that school, Travis. Not a better place to sleep. <laughs> it's, it's not just that the stage is changing. Um, they're renovating the house and the front of the house so that when you walk through the Cavs Green building, you know that there's a stage there. Because previously, people would be like, wait, what's that? What's behind those doors? What's behind those doors? But there will be an actual entrance and an actual way to understand that, oh, we put on plays here. Great. Yes. I'm excited for that. They're I'm also like, renovating the workshop good. too, which is huge. So that's another really? one. That is true. Yeah. The you know, whole thank thing thank God it. for all of that, honestly, because mm-hmm. I love Abbott, but it needs it needs a bit of a lift. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, uh, oh. I, I do know that, um, you know, people from not theater, I go to Abbott, like you said, they don't know that theater exists here. <laughs> Unless you guys are near Casgrain, theater doesn't exist to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. I mean, hopefully they have more audience because of it, right? Mm-hmm. Some science kid walks in, forgets, um, you know, something in the lab or whatnot. Oh, look, a stage play is being put on today. Let's go. Hopefully, <laughs> right? Oh, that's the goal. That's the goal. Um, but yeah, um, I honestly cannot wait. And it, it is quite surreal to know that now we're going to have a brand new Kaz Green stage because I've only known it as the brown floors, the, the lip up front, um, and, uh, you know, the, the beautiful red seats. But here we are changing it up. And I'm looking forward to I just mm-hmm. hope it's not all red anymore. I, I can't oh. stand those red just walls. Red, red, red. Oh, yeah. don't, don't make it even more red. <laughs> They're gonna paint everything red. The Brown stage is red. red. Oh. The floors are red. Everything's red. Everything's red. <laughs> I feel like they should do blue. Please do blue. And blue imagine cool. it's Abbott. It would make oh, sense. That's true. They make right? it blue and yellow. Imagine. Oh, not, maybe not yellow. That might, that, that might not. Yellow's be a bit of an eyesore. No, I think I think I think blue blue's nice. Yeah, no, no. Do like a royal blue. Yeah, heard from me here. Do a royal blue. And, uh, yeah, Maybe royal blue. They, they've already started it. So get this man on the bill team right away. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, so we're going to switch gears a bit and talk after Abbott now that we've talked about, you know, um, you know, the, the Casgrain stage. So do you guys have any things that you potentially want to do after Abbott? I always ask this question, but everyone's kind of like, I don't know. Are you guys in the same boat? <laughs> do you guys Absolutely. know if you want to do film? I got some ideas. Yeah. So, yeah. Got some potential paths. Uh, I'm not going to be going in back into school next year, but I might be going the year after that. And my hope is that I can spend 2022 and parts of 2023 uh, working and workshopping. Workshopping is what I mostly want to do to sort of hone in on various different skills. Uh, in particular, I'm interested in doing more puppetry and I'm going to be trying to uh, take some workshops at uh, Miam. Uh, Maison Internationale des Arts de la Marionnette, uh, specifically because they have a very like open and accessible workshop experience for newcomers, intermediate. Uh, they have their own workshop space. Uh, that for me, that's like that's exactly what I want to do because that's kind of what I want to jump into. That's that's great. No, honestly, like I I didn't even get the chance to do puppetry. We didn't have that, <laughs> right? But we. Um, Zach kind of taught us a bit about it, but honestly, yeah, that sounds great. That sounds, I actually might do that as well. Workshops are always good, guys. Just saying, workshops, do them. Please, by God, do them. Um, Often inexpensive. Very so, inexpensive. Not <laughs> yes, ideally free, but yeah. maybe like $10. So, you know, like, take the, the experience alone is good. worth it, man. Pretty good. And that's the thing, like there, there's always people putting on workshops for something. Mm-hmm. Take them and out. workshops are networking. The students yeah. you meet there yeah. and the professionals you meet there, you might work with again. And if you put a good impression in, that is the best networking you can do. Absolutely. Ain't no better way. There really isn't. And that's the thing, like I know several people have said it before, but we are the ones that need to go and really put our name out there no one's going to do it for you maybe eventually our agent 
but you're another name on the list guys let's be honest right they're just like okay well maybe okay go right but you really need to put your name out there sometimes and workshops are definitely a good way to do so uh anyone else have any more um thoughtful things for the future that you might want to do i oh no go go I also have a general goal. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Um, I definitely don't want to go back to school anytime soon. I, I need a break from that. Um, but I do want to get like my, my ACTRA membership. Uh, I want to try to get an agent and try to get some work. Uh, I definitely want to move more into screen acting. I think um, I want to explore that a bit more uh, since I've been doing theater for so long. <laughs> um, but I don't have like something specific that I'm interested in uh, just general ideas that I want to pursue you know that's always great but yeah you guys honestly I I cannot wait to see what the future holds for you guys but does anyone else have anything else they want to add um Travis pointing out workshops definitely something that caught my eye was uh probably um uh Oh, the French festival. There we go. French festival. Um, to even just, just, just slowly write a bit. You know, I have, I have one of my, one of my classmates as well. She writes a lot and to work with her in the future is something that I'm really, really hoping. Uh, but I am actually excited for more school. I want to go for maybe, maybe see if I can study um, where I send my applications in and even um, clown clown would be a workshop that I would really be interested in to really, to really try more, more movement based um movement based work and a lot of dance as well but honestly i think whatever doors whatever doors open be thankful open them up and see where it takes you you know so so yeah that's yeah that's it on my end yeah no i'm i think i'm going the complete opposite direction of eric less movement is possible but better but yeah. no, like he said doors open take the doors yeah. don't miss an opportunity so you don't know when you'll get it again but um, I love to do voiceover work. I've always been a fan Let's of voice go, acting, Let's go. like just character creation, all that kind of stuff. Having this like just this crazy passion for D and D and all this kind of stuff like that has just gotten me so hyped to do a whole bunch of voiceover work. And from the people I've been talking to about it, there's like voice acting work and like audiobook logs, commercial stuff, animation. We're in Montreal. EA is over here. So like super huge game company needs voiceover work for that. And that also can lead into like mocap work. So yeah. as much as I dislike movement work personally, you know, I don't think I'm going to be avoiding it anytime soon. So yeah. here's hoping. Yeah. Stop is a huge hire. I say, is it EA or Ubisoft? It's, it's, it's Ubisoft. Oh, okay. Ubisoft. Ubisoft. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ubisoft. I don't know what I'm on. No, it's yeah, fine. yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. It's it's worth pointing out because you know, for I'm, that's a huge piece of advice for young actors. The stage is wonderful. Ubisoft is gonna pay you, so Ubisoft you know, don't be afraid pay to put money. on the little white balls and do some voiceover work. For <laughs> real, <laughs> man. No, I'm saying for a few different things. Mark Rice six, seven, eight. Who cares, man? Yeah. Enjoy yeah. it. Mm -hmm. yeah no voiceover works amazing um i've done two i believe um but that's the thing there's there's many there's many things here in montreal if you guys don't want to travel it's fine you know there's many things elsewhere as well um but here in montreal there's a lot of stuff like that and um yeah daisy do you have any yeah so i'm one of those people who want to travel I've been in Montreal for too long. Um, <laughs> um, and I, the plan originally was to go to Vancouver for the film school there, but I'm broke. So I'm probably just going to stay here, work for a bit, and then eventually get there and uh, see where that takes me. Um, but yeah, that's, I, it's a very loose plan. I am struggling with planning stuff right now. So I'm just trying to day by day, week by week type thing. Honestly, to Vancouver Film School, huge shout out. Um, a lot of my ensemble is over there. Um, and the filming industry, Vancouver is a place to go. Um, 
there is really quite a bit of uh, films that are put on over there. Things like X Men, things like um, Lucifer, stuff like that. All sorts of things are filmed there all the time. Um, some things from Marvel. If you guys love superheroes, some things are filmed there as well. You don't notice it because they don't really talk about it too much. Um, but they do film a lot of stuff in Vancouver. Um, and really anywhere in Canada. Toronto, too, is very well known um, for musical theater. So if you guys want to go to musical theater, um, that's a good place to go. Um, but yeah, voiceover, um, stuff like that here. Film, TV, stuff like that. Elsewhere in Canada. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, yeah, so we're going to, we have two more questions and then sadly we got to say goodbye. Um, it's always the worst part. Um, so one big question that I'm going to start adding here. Um, if you had any play you guys can do right now, if COVID did not exist, what play would it be? Ooh. I'll give you guys a couple minutes to think about it. Ooh, this one's boy. a hard one. Oh, is this right. a one answer question or a two? Because I got it can two. be several. Uh, yeah, it needs to be several. <laughs> it it There's can't be one, so you know. Many. Oh man, I would love to do either the play that goes wrong. That would be such an experience and be just a great time. Or personal love i'd love to do sweeney todd any other yeah. characters in there say less I'll i see tell her sweeney todd uh, sweeney todd mrs lovett pirelli any of them you name it i'm there i can see that honestly <laughs> i i can definitely see that you can see tyler going around with the uh the blade wow. very deep notes <laughs> his lovely friends you know. Yeah. No, this one's a hard one. Honestly, I I probably can't even answer it. That's why I ask you guys because I can't. Do it. <laughs> so I don't have to do it myself. Good thinking, that, honestly. Right. You're genius. It's. Yeah, real. I I would also say the play that goes wrong. That was one that popped up in my head, but another one would be Heather's. Um, mm. The. the Jason, I think, was thinking about doing Heather's or Mary Poppins, and he chose Mary Poppins. Uh, copyright reasons, I think, something like yeah. that. I don't yeah. know, but um, H- Heather's would be pretty sick. So Jason opted for Disney, you know. Um, <laughs> Even <laughs> more think about that for one second, covering. you know. Uh, the global, <laughs> the biggest thing in the world. Um, but yeah, no, I get you. Uh, Heather's is. I would love to pay, play JD. Um, <laughs> And oh my God, Heather, uh, all the Heathers and that. Yeah. I mean, if Jason ever does that, I'm the first one lining up. To... Say less. For Heather, right? Jason. Oh, yeah. Jason, for sure. Can I do a part? Which one, though? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> On all, all this talk about the play that goes wrong, I'm thinking like, I saw it once already, but like, I would love to do Noises Off. That'd be so much fun. Just the chaos of that. Oh, Ooh. boy. So much fun. Well, Abbott's already been there, done that. Just a few years too late, Trav. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I saw it. I loved it as an audience member. It was great. Great great job, honestly. Yeah, noises off. The, the set for noises off. My oh, the set. God. So good. I don't want any of them for doing that. That was insane. That was... Yeah, it's, it, it's so crazy how much, like, work the technicians and designers put into those sets sometimes because it, it, they really just like bring this entire like community to life sometimes it's like oh, we trap the time <laughs> they go off <laughs> then you talk to them afterwards it's like hey man how you doing i haven't slept in seven hours i'm running <laughs> on coffee please help me i, I don't mean You're to, like, to great, go man. too far off but just a funny thing about love and information when my friends came they asked like Oh, how many people worked on the set? Like, who did all this design work? It's like, it was one person, right? One, one person, and they worked their butt off, right? Yeah, shout out. And of course, many more built it, yeah. right? So it was a team effort, of course. But they were saying, like, who, whose envision was this? One right? person. It was one person. Honestly, like just the Abbott department as a whole. I know it's changing, and I know there's going to be 
several things happening um, with uh, the new rebranding and whatnot. But the amount of talent in all three of the sectors, I'm knowing it, it's three, now it's going to be two. Um, but the, the three sectors is insane. It's just insane. Um, and ALC actually also in that. So four sectors. Um, <clears throat> my God. <laughs> um, For real. Like there, we were talking about Pippin before. Um, and, you know, we we're just talking about Mary Poppins. And there's been several other shows from ALC. Outstanding. Um, and, you know, just the amount of incredible designs and the incredible artistry in all three of those sectors there there's no words for it um Mm -hmm. you know abbott is known now in montreal um because of these things right because when you go and see an abbott show you are transported 100 percent, right the minute you walk into those doors even though they're going to be different soon the minute you walk into those doors um you know there's you're transported and that will never get old um and i cannot wait to see um you know what comes next you know um but anyone else have any dream roles as covid uh hopefully slowly dies i was just thinking about some musicals i am not a big dancer but i would love to be part of newsies (laughs) oh yeah for sure Uh like just the thought of being a newsie, like even in the ensemble, I don't care. Like I'd be really sick. Mm-hmm. Um, or a chorus line is also one of my big favorites. Um, and just normal plays, I, I streetcar name desire would be really cool too. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. There was one that really caught my eye. I don't know if the if if, if if it was one that Travis already mentioned, but we learned it and it was in in history class. Uh, with Alicia uh it was it was the whole set was like midair and it was it was it was it was oh, it was yeah, yeah, the, oh, yeah right? the, the set that turned yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That, crazy that would be like like to work on crazy stuff like that where because I, I I'm I'm highly afraid of heights so to, to go against <laughs> something here. that here. <laughs> I, I would have to like be like I right, this is this is like a next level would be crazy or like Phil musicals one of my favorite musicals that I've ever watched uh, was actually company and i really i really really like company it's 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 nothing it's nothing too 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 crazy but i like i like like i, I like a lot of realism as well um and just honestly anything that comes my way but uh musicals would be very fun i need to get my voice up there but with due time we shall see you know so yeah sorry phil had mentioned uh dancing and newsies and that got me thinking of burlesque and cabaret and uh, actually, it was just a couple of days ago, my roommate and I were saying how we wanted to, you know, act in in cabaret or something. So I think that'd be interesting. <laughs> On the mention of past productions, John Abbott's cabaret was so good. I wish I saw that. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Talking about transportation, you could you could smell the cigarette smoke. It was <laughs> wonderful. It was splendid. <laughs> yes, sir honestly yeah i mean anything that really comes to abbott now i'm not surprised like we had incense in dr faustus and i still can't get out of my nose um (laughs) because i they literally walked right past me (laughs) every time um but that's the thing you really are transported to these places and i cannot wait to see what abbott does next what you guys do next um and yeah um so unfortunately we have the final question um and the final question is how do you guys feel leaving third year um coming up here we go man you say the hardest for last of course i do Uh, nice tearjerker before the end though um but yeah i i know it's it's bittersweet um but uh yeah, how do you guys feel leaving the uh, John Abbott coming up very soon? It's I I haven't even begun to like emotionally process it yet. Mm-hmm. It's only hit me now where I'm like, 
man, by week nine, we're not going to have Andy anymore. Like this oh, man who's been like, tough. who's been like teaching us for like tough. all these years. I like, mm-hmm. I've also had him in ALC, so I've had it for even longer. And I'm like, oh, no. Believe me, Andy never leaves your life. I know. <laughs> he I never know. leaves your life. I know. <laughs> but it's, it's just like, oh man. It, it's just, it's the realization of that that like only sets in when you're going to get to that last point, much like we're the last play that's been on the cast gray stage. It only happens afterwards, mm-hmm. but I mean, it's also nice. Cause it's like, you know, especially for me, I've been here for so long, far too long. So it's going to feel nice to not have to be here and have that kind of freedom. But man, is it going to take an emotional toll on my soul? Very much so. <laughs> I'm terrified. <laughs> like I just keep thinking about what's coming next, and I don't know. Mm. And that's just really scary for me. Um, I'm like excited at the same time just to like see where the future leads me. I'm excited to see where my classmates are gonna be. Um, but I'm just really scared. <laughs> it's understandable. I mean, mm-hmm. honestly, at the beginning. It does seem scary, but the not knowing is perfectly justified. A lot of people, no, no one really knows, right? Because especially now with COVID too, one thing that we can plan might not happen either, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I know it sucks to say it that way, but it's true. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, honestly, like I said, people will cash you regardless where you land. Um and just not knowing it's, it's great, especially as an actor, just whatever comes your way. Then your CV randomly becomes from like three things to like 10. It's yeah. nuts. In a blink of an eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think like we can, it might be sad to go, but I think we can still like sometimes the bigger the rupture, the more impactful it was on your life. So like it might be sad to see everybody go, but at least you know that my time wasn't wasted, you know, and, you know, you can always be, you can always leave a certain period and always be like, no, I'm happy that I invested into that, you know, and uh, I'm no matter how, how many times I'd go back, I'd always choose to go, to go back to Abbott, you know, um, and the, the, the fear of something, yeah, that's, that's super justified. Um, but it's, it's, we have to find a way to, to welcome it. And ever and if ever we can transform that into work, transform that into something we can create, you know, and, and don't be afraid to fall, you know, and it's hard to be like, oh, let's go. But that's, that's, that's it. If it was easy, you know, yeah, but it. yeah, exactly. But Tyler, when you said like, like, like by week nine, we're not going to see Andy anymore. Oh, my, my heart actually just, I know it's disgusting. <laughs> but it's, uh, no, but it's, you know, I keep going back to this one email that Jason Daisy remembers this email. It's one email that Jason sent after the end of Pippin that just keeps on coming up every single time. And I think his exact words that he used in that email was theater ends, but you move on. And now it it just, Mm. it still sticks with me every single day where it's like, yeah, you, you finish a run, but you keep going. And then you do the next thing and that thing ends and you keep going. You do the next thing and that thing ends. And every single one of them was going to hurt every one. Always, because you're finishing something you work so hard on, and you put so much passion behind, and you end it. But then you do the next thing. So, I suppose so. (laughs) Wise words. Wise words, Tyler. Let's go. Wise words, Jason. (laughs) Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. Yeah. Transmission. Uh, Yeah. Messenger. I love how you looked up too. You're like Jason's up. Father <laughs> Howell, man. God, God bless it be. The stories that that man has told us about religion and faith, man. Mm. Love you, Jason. You're still coming on the podcast very soon. So, um, yeah. And guys, I mean, there's no better way to end it. Tyler, you did it very, very well with your wise words there, bud. Um, and honestly, thank you all for being on today's episode um i cannot wait to see your amazing futures and i always say this at the end you know uh shining a light on all of you um i cannot wait to see what your future holds whether you end up in 
film, TV, puppetry, voiceover, whatever it may be, um, you guys are going to shine super, super bright. Um, and I am so glad to have had an hour long conversation, hour and a half long conversation with you all. Um, and, you know, having this amazing memory uh, that we can look back on in a bit um, and never have it forgotten. You know what I mean? Uh, you said that Jason ta- told you these amazing words, Tyler, and it's true. We do move on, but, you know, family uh, is forever and you guys are going to be family, whether you are at Abbott or not. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, it's going to hurt. Don't get me wrong. It hurts when you leave Abbott. You guys are then going to soar and fly wherever else you may go. So yeah. thank you so much for being on, guys. And uh, Thank you, Matthew. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for having us. Yeah. Keep being great, okay? Keep, keep your spirits up high. I know COVID is a thing. I don't want it to be a thing, but it still is. Christ. Um, but yeah, okay, guys, keep shining bright. Absolutely. are off the curtain has fallen and it's time to say goodbye thank you all for joining us on the little thespian podcast if you have any questions or concerns please don't hesitate to ask either down below or on any of our platforms on the next episode of the little thespian podcast we talk to the incredibly gifted talented actor singer dancer and all-around great human being eloise legacy I cannot wait to talk to her all things Carry the Musical as she was playing Norma in In the Wings production company's Carry the Musical at the Mainline Theater on the 42nd episode of the Little Thespian Podcast. Hope you guys are looking forward to that. And there's much, much more coming, guys. There is so much in the pipeline as we move closer to 50 episodes. I know we've been on a bit of a hiatus recently, but we are going to be slowly coming back. And we're going to have some new awesome things coming your way. So, if you guys like those awesome things, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to us here on YouTube. And know that there is much, much more coming, guys. We are so sorry for the hiatus. But we'd like to thank the amazing people that were here today of the class of 2022. As well as, if you guys have not seen our 40th epic epic episode with adrian hefes broca uh guys we've hit 40 and we're looking to hit 50 so let's keep the ball rolling if you want to be a guest on the little test Podcast, podcast we'll get to hit us up check all our links down below and we will see you all on the next little thespian podcast this is matthew crowner your host saying don't forget to always shine bright we'll see you all on the next little thespian podcast